Welcome to your pre-lab lecture for your cell membrane stress lab. When you come into lab this week, you will find beets. This is a beet, and they will have been cut into cross sections so that you can easily get cylinders of beet tissue from those beets. You first have to decide how many cylinders you need, so how many levels of treatment you're having, and then at each level of treatment, how many replicates. So if I had three levels of treatment and I wanted to do two replicates at each level, I would need to generate six cylinders. So to do that, you'll take this cork boring tool and your cross section of beet tissue, and just like you're making cookie cutter cookies, you'll press down into the beet tissue and then pull out. And when you pull out, your beet tissue will probably get stuck in the cork bore. So you can take a one milliliter serological pipette, place that through the other end, and gently push out your cylinder. So you'll go ahead and generate as many cylinders as you need. So in my example, I needed six. We'll just generate one right now. Then within your lab group, you need to decide what size you're going to make those cylinders. I would recommend no smaller than one centimeter and no larger than two and a half centimeters. And of course, it should be consistent among all of your cylinders. So you'll need to take a ruler and measure whatever length you want to use, make that decision, and then use a scalpel to cut all of your cylinders to the same length. Once you've got all of your cylinders prepared at the correct length, you can take those cylinders and drop them into a beaker of tap water to rinse any pigment. And as you can see, there's a lot of pigment uh, from damaged cells, and that's releasing into this tap water. So you want to let those sit for a couple minutes. After they've rinsed thoroughly, you can pour into the sink the remaining tap water or into another beaker and then dump your cylinders onto a paper towel to drain. Now depending on whether you choose temperature stress or chemical stress, your procedure will be a little different. So let's begin with temperature stress. If you're doing temperature stress, you're going to do a pre-treatment of each of your cylinders at that temperature for one minute without any fluid in the tube. So to do that, you can take your cylinder and place it into the tube, and then you'll put that tube at, uh, for temperatures above freezing, you'll put that tube at that temperature for a minute. Okay. Then you will add five milliliters of distilled water to your tube and incubate a further 20 minutes at room temperature. So that's for temperatures above freezing. For temperatures uh, at freezing, you need to freeze the cylinders for 30 minutes. So in that case, I would pre-treat my cylinder for 30 minutes without any liquid in the tube, in the freezer. 30 minutes pass, and then you could take and add five mils of distilled water to your tube, and again, incubate a further 20 minutes at room temperature. For all temperatures, you need to gently shake those tubes at predetermined intervals, so you can gently tap the tube. But you do want to do this gently so you don't damage any cells. If you're doing chemical treatments, there is no pretreatment. You will just simply take your cylinder, you'll place it into the tube, and then you will add five milliliters of whatever solvent you have chosen. and you will let that sit at room temperature for 20 minutes. Once the 20 minutes have passed, regardless of whether you're doing chemical or temperature, so this is the same for both, both types of treatment, when the 20 minutes have passed, you'll gently mix your tube one last time, and then you're going to prepare your cuvettes for spectrophotometry. Okay. 
The easiest way to do this is just to transfer, once you've mixed your tube, the easiest way is to transfer the liquid from your test tube to a spectrophotometer cuvette. So you'll want to do that for each level of treatment and each replicate. You will want to use a separate or a fresh pipette each time, which I didn't do here, so let's do it right. Finally, my third tube, I have a fresh pipette, and I'm going to add that liquid to the cuvette. You should do this carefully and you should aim to get roughly the same amount of liquid into each cuvette just to be consistent. At this point you'll be done with all of your other materials and so you can have them out of your way and clean them up when you're done with your, your spectrophotometry analyses. You will use the SpectraViz just as you used a couple weeks ago and you will make sure that you blank your SpectraViz with distilled water. So we'll imagine this is filled with distilled water. Place it in the SpectraViz, connect it to the computer, do your blanking step. I'm just going to do that once. And then you take the blank out, and then you can perform your readings for each individual sample. When you're finished, you'll need to dispose of everything properly. Uh, any distilled water can go down the sink. Beet tissue uh, can go into the trash. Uh, organic solvents need to go into properly labeled, um, into the proper labeled waste receptacle that will be set out for the different organic solvents. Your cuvette should each be rinsed out and turned upside down to dry. Any glassware should also be dumped in, uh, any liquid from any glassware should be dumped and those beakers should be rinsed. Finally, your cuvettes, uh, your larger test tubes should also be rinsed and hung to dry. And I believe that's it. So good luck in lab this week. Have fun generating a plan for your experiments.